we were fortunate to live in a metropolitan area that had the likes of the NIH and Kennedy Krieger and Children's Hospital. Um, I was fortunate to know people in the medical community. So um, at birth, when my child was um, genetically tested for other suspicious reasons, and Mayo Clinic said, she has all her chromosomes, um, I relied on that information. Um, because her, she did not thrive and she had developmental delays in six months, I went to some specialists who thought things were suspicious, and they retested with a better technology. And from that, she was missing a big, big portion of her 22nd chromosome and 52 genes. So it was a big mess the first time. Um, a researcher then did a microarray years later when genetic testing got even more technological. And um, she not only has a deletion, but she has a very small duplication, uh, which may or may not mean that there's an inherited component. So um, it's a great case study in technology is going to create more diagnoses and more rare disease are probably going to pop up out of it. Um, the other thing that Shannon represents is she has autism as a result of Phelan McDermott syndrome. And in her case, she was given the Phelan McDermott syndrome or the 22Q13 deletion label first. But if you walk like a duck and you quack like a duck, you're a duck. <laughs> in an educational setting, she is, you know, has autism with flying colors, um, albeit low functioning autism. So um, what that tells us is that when there's genetic causes um, of things, behavior like autism, or more common diseases like autism, if the researchers study these teeny tiny genetic causes, that's where the treatments are going to come. And those treatments may in fact be treatments that can be used for the greater population. So something that were to come out of Phelan McDermott's in a research may in fact be a treatment down the road for a child with autism. Yeah, that's they have unknown, unknown cause.